Hi, welcome back to another Baker Monday video. My name is Kate and I am here at the President James K. Polk State Historic Site uh, in the museum in our exhibit here next to our section about spinning and weaving, which is appropriate for today's discussion of how to make yarn using the treadle wheel. So first we'll take a look at some of the main parts and then we'll get into some spinning. All right, so let's take a quick look at the parts of this wheel and then get spinning. So we've got our wheel here. Underneath we've got the pedal or the treadle and that is going to keep the wheel spinning. So we're not going to have to spin it with our hand. Instead, we'll spin it by pumping the pedal. It's got a drive band running from the wheel uh, to the bobbin and the whirl. And then around the bobbin, this is what we call a flyer. And as that flyer spins, it's going to be what adds the twist. Okay, so there are a number of other parts on this wheel, but those are the main ones that you need to know in terms of how it works. So let's go ahead and jump into spinning. All right, so now that we've taken a look at the parts, we'll do some spinning. I've got some fiber here. Um, if you had a chance to watch our video on carding, You'll remember how we prepare the fiber for spinning. If not, go ahead and take a look at that video after this one. Uh, now, this wheel, I'm still gonna get it started by just giving it a little spin with my hand, and then I'll pick up with the pedal. Uh, I'm gonna be spinning counterclockwise. This wheel is also known as the flax wheel and flax is traditionally spun counterclockwise. It doesn't matter a whole lot which way you're spinning until you want to ply or spin two single pieces of yarn together, and then you're gonna need to make sure that you go the opposite direction so that you don't unspin the work that you've already done. Now, as I'm spinning, the flyer is what's adding some twist into the fiber, and then it's automatically being drawn up onto this bobbin. So that's the main function that makes this wheel uh, faster, or more efficient than the great wheel. If you saw that video, then you'll remember that as I got to the length of my arm, I would stop and then wind the yarn onto the bobbin, or onto the spindle in that case. But with this machine, you eliminate that step. So as you're spinning, it's automatically being drawn up onto the bobbin, so you don't have to stop and add that extra step in. And spinning, no matter whether you're using the drop spindle or a great wheel, a treadle wheel like this, or any other one, a lot of it's really just about getting in the rhythm of the wheel and feeling the tension of the fiber being able to tell when it has enough twist in it. And in this case, kind of giving it that little push forward so that it gets drawn up through the orifice here and onto the bobbin. Okay, now I'm reaching the end of this piece of fiber. And just like we've done with all of the other methods, I can just take another piece of fluff, go hold it over the remaining unspun area, pinch it a little bit further back up 
into the unspun area. Get the wheel started. And then that twist is just going to travel up into that new piece. And you just keep on going. Now, another uh, thing that you need to adjust on the treadle wheel is on the flyer here, we have some hooks and you can move your yarn down or up these hooks and wherever it's catching on the hook, that's gonna be where it winds on to the bottom. Um, so it's not something that you have to do nearly as much as when with the great wheel you're winding on, uh, but periodically you'll need to, to change that so that you make sure your yarn is winding on evenly to the bobbin. And these bobbins can hold quite a lot of yarn and you can spin quite a lot um, very fast on these wheels. That's why they're still uh, probably what, one of, if not the most popular type of wheel for hand spinners or home spinners. And the technology really hasn't changed that much um, over the last several hundred years. Now when we get to a stopping point, really all we need to do is just make sure that any little bit of yarn that we have here um, isn't going to come unspun. So we can just wrap it around this maiden. These are the two maidens here. Just wrap it around there and that will hold it in place. So that's probably going to be it um, for the next little while as far as our fiber videos go. Um, these are all the wheels and spinning tools that we have here at our site. Um, but knowing how these wheels work, you can go ahead and look up other videos, other articles, and there are lots of other variations on the setup. And you should be able to tell how they work from knowing those main parts of the wheel. Um, later on, we might come back to some more fiber videos, uh, take a look at weaving. Uh, knitting would also have um, been fairly common during the time that President Polk was alive. Crochet comes a little bit later, um, but if you're interested in fiber, feel free to join us online for our virtual Fiber Guild meetings. Those are Wednesdays at 11. You can find the information for that on our Facebook page. Once we are reopened fully again, then you're welcome to join us here on site Wednesdays at 11 um, for a fiber meeting where we can just get together and talk about all kinds of different fiber arts, the history, and also uh, modern tools and techniques. Uh, coming up, I'm going to go back to some more craft and activity videos that are going to feature some more things here on the site and give you some fun things to get into at home over the summer. If you have any questions about spinning or any suggestions for future videos you'd like to see, leave those in the comments below or you can get in touch with us uh, on Facebook, Instagram, we're on Twitter, of course YouTube, and then at www.jameskpolk.net. That's our website. We look forward uh, to seeing you guys in our next video. And until then, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.